welcome to part four of our back to school STEM challenge series. We're almost at five. I'm a little bit sad about it, but let's leave that for next week. We're on part four, Apple Ally. So as you know by now, for every one of these STEM challenges, I like to start with a reason you would want to do this for your back to school season. So one reason is that it's standards based. So this is going to help you meet all your next gen science standards for engineering. And if you, and some of others as well, not just in science, but in math and ELA and even social studies, if you take a look. One of my favorite reasons to use a STEM challenge right at the beginning of the school year is that it helps you get to know your kids really quickly. So you're going to be able to discover the way that they think, the things that frustrate them, the way they work together, the different latent talents that they have, and these things could take you weeks to discover otherwise. So I like to do this pretty much every week. So as I said before, this is challenge four out of five and it's called Apple Ally. The premise is that you are going to have the students build an apple catcher. So the first thing that they are going to need to do is build a tree trunk in the center of whatever their build space is. If you have stu younger students, um, I would say even up until at least fifth grade and maybe even all the way up to eighth, honestly, use a box um, as your build space. But if you have a feeling you know you have advanced students or maybe you have a gate class and you just want to see what they can do, I would use a foam board or just a flat piece of cardboard. It makes it much more challenging. So I would say definitely for this challenge, you're going to want to use small apples. So we actually probably should pause here and take a closer look at the materials. I discuss the details of the STEM Challenge Cycle in the Apples Aloft video. You can click on the STEM Challenge Cycle title above now and it will take you to that section of Apples Aloft. Okay, so I don't really know if you can see this or not, but I'm just going to tilt um, so you can see this design. So it's just a lot of crosshatch of strings and pipe cleaners and rubber bands and they've been paper clipped along the edges of the box. Um, when the students build their tree trunk, they don't need to build out the top of the tree or the leaves, but some students are going to want to and it looks nice, so no harm, no foul. You want to schedule 90 minutes for it and you want to have some spare apples on hand. And the reason for that is they're going to be closely observing before each drop of the apple to see if there are any scratches or dents. And as they're building and testing, things could get damaged along the way. So just just have a few on hand extra. One way that you can test this is actually partner up different groups because one of the things you want to do is, you know, if, if a team is testing their own and they know that this part of the design is very well done, then they're going to drop the apple there every time for their testing, um, but maybe they ran out of time over on this side. When teams partner up, they're more careful to test in four different zones of the design and they're also more likely to look for flaws that they want to exploit. You can decide how you want to measure success. So the way that I originally intended and wrote it in was that you would drop the apple from the height of the tree trunk. But you can modify that any way you like. So you can have the students place the apple at four different points. If they're successful there, again, you can move up the marked lines on the tree trunk and just see what's the greatest height they could get an apple to drop from and not go through all the way to the ground. If you have younger students, then what I would recommend is having them test by just placing. Just placing the apples in four different sections and seeing if it stays. And that can be, and that can be your cause for success. As you want to challenge the students or as they are older, then you start raising the level from which you drop the apple. Um, I wouldn't recommend going higher than the actual trunk of the tree. Um, maybe with, again, with 8th grade students, you might have designs that can withstand that. But for the most part, you're going to be dropping, you can decide, mark off measurement lines. So just mark off every inch and then you can have them do tests from different heights. So again, I, st I start with just resting. Can you rest the apple in four different spots? Um, and if you can, then you go up to the next level. They're going to drop one, the apple and see if it falls through. Mine did. So after each drop, the, if your students only have one apple, they'll need to fish out the apple every time. And if you have some extra apples, then you can just give them four because they're going to be doing four drops. 
So you probably noticed by now that we have a theme going. Um, of course, when I thought back to school, I thought apples. And when I thought apples, I thought Isaac Newton. And then, of course, when you think Isaac Newton, you have to think about the laws of motion, which is why so many of these challenges incorporate those laws of motion in. So again, you're going to want to take a look for your cross-curricular standards and get as much juice for the squeeze as you can out of each STEM challenge. And if you want to save yourself prep time and planning time, take a look at the resource. This resource is going to save you so much time and ensure you get the most out of implementing the challenge. Just a reminder, the grade levels are set 2nd through 8th because the resource contains modifications for grades 2 through 8. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards for engineering and physical science for grades 2 through 8. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions, including links to video clips to help you and your students understand how Newton's laws of motion are demonstrated in the world and in this challenge. Please note, although several of my back-to-school challenges explore Newton's laws of motion, the links to articles, videos, and websites to enrich understanding are unique by challenge. You'll find a materials list as well as a criteria and constraints list, which is editable so you can tailor the challenge to your kids. For student handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll find a set of group discussion questions as well. In the extension handouts, you'll find task card templates for student-made questions related to the challenge. Use them for a game of Scoot, a center for early finishers, or an option for subplans. You'll also get process flow templates. And in addition to that, you'll get worksheets to estimate and measure mass and an Apple writing template that goes along with a couple of the ideas listed in teacher tips. Sheets outlined in green are editable. This resource is available individually and as part of a discounted bundle. Links can be found in the description below the video. All right, so I hope that you really liked Apple Ally and that you try it with your students. And just be aware that this is a tricky one. This is challenging. So give your students some extra materials here and give them some extra time. But don't shy away from the hard challenges. This is, this is where all the good stuff happens. Make sure you like and subscribe. Next week, we're going to be talking about our fifth of five. I'm a little bit sad, but it's a fun one. It's called Apples Ahead. See you next week.